Hello dear friends, this is Ewell Humphreys. I'm glad that you're with me again to share just a few minutes on a message I want to speak to you. I've entitled a message on baptism. Now baptism is one of the two ordinances of the New Testament church, we believe. I'm speaking to, <clears throat> to you what I believe is taught in the doctrines of some of the churches uh, from the Bible. And though there is some difference between different churches regarding baptism, uh, actually we agree more or less on the same issue, and that is that it is an ordinance that we need to obey to serve the Lord. We believe baptism uh, is something that every Christian should do in obeying the command of our Lord. And we don't believe that it is essential to salvation, but we believe that it is necessary to please God and to obey the Lord who taught us to be baptized after we're saved. The Bible says over in Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse uh, 20, it says, Jesus said, All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore and make disciples. Learn, make disciples. Bring them into to Christ. Bring them into the kingdom of God. Save souls. And then baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit the triune God. And then teach them all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And so baptism is something Jesus said, and as he is just before he ascended, that it is very important that we do. And over in the, in, uh, uh, just a few days after he ascended, uh, as the <clears throat> disciples were praying and and waiting on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came with power, and Peter got up on, at Pentecost and preached, and uh, there were over 3,000 souls that were saved and were baptized uh, on that day at Pentecost. Wonderful. And what happened was, when he finished preaching, the people cried out, What must we do? And Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you for the remission of sins and for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so here he says, repent and be baptized. And so I think the word repent carries with it a turning from the old life, a turning unto God. And in it, it includes the, the matter of believing, the faith. I don't think a person can really and truly, spiritually believe in the Lord Jesus Christ without repenting. And I don't believe that a person can truly repent without believing. And so believing still comes involved in our, is a major step in our salvation. In, in uh, Mark the 16th chapter, Jesus said, Who, uh, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. Now, he that believes, he that believes and then baptized, you shall be saved. But you see, if you don't believe, you can be baptized all many times and never be saved. So believing is the main thing. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But you've got to believe. The Bible says over in Ephesians, the second chapter, we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves, it's the gift of God. And so, we are not saved by anything that we do except we believe and trust in the Lord. And over in the book of, again, in the, in the matter of Acts, we read in the in this chapter of Acts, about the uh, a, a ninth chapter of Acts, the story of Philip and the eunuch. And the Lord told Philip, who was a, a disciple of our Lord, I mean, he was a preacher, and he sent him down to a place called Gaza. And they went down there and he saw this eunuch sitting in a chariot and he was reading the Bible. And uh, so Philip said, do you know what you're reading? And he said, no, I, I really don't. I, I'm reading here about someone who had to suffer for our sins. Who was he talking about? And it says that Philip opened his mouth and preached unto him Jesus. And they showed him. And then they came to a body of water and the eunuch said, Here is water. Why should I not be baptized? And Philip said, If you can believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. And he said, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe he's the Son of God. 
And then Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he was baptized. So you see, before the baptism, he had to, he needed to confess Christ as his Lord and Savior. And you need to believe in Jesus Christ, and you're saved forever. Call upon his name, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. That means you, my dear, dear friend. That means you. If you call on the Lord, you shall be saved. And that's important. And then we are baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians in the, in the uh, 12th chapter, we are baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. We are baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. So when you are baptized spiritually, you are baptized into the body of Christ and become a Christian. And you become a member of His church, which is also called the body of Christ. And so that's important for us to know. And then, then another word we read over in Rome, uh, Romans in the fourth chapter. It says that, Therefore being buried with Christ in baptism, that as he was raised up by the glory of God, so we should be raised and walk in newness of life. So the baptism is a picture outwardly of what has happened inwardly. First of all, it's a symbol of what happened to Jesus. We're baptized as he was buried. We are buried with Christ in baptism, in his death. And when, when that, and then we're raised, recognizing that he came out of the tomb and was raised the third day. Now, it also means that when we're baptized with him, the old evil nature in us died. And we're bearing that old evil nature, and we're raised with a new spirit. God gives us a new spirit, and we have that before we go down. But it indicates that it has happened in our lives. And that's important. All praise the Lord. I hope and pray that you have believed in Jesus. And if you have not been baptized, you need to find you a good church and follow the Lord in baptism. I would like to pray a brief prayer with you. If you would pray this prayer with me and mean it, asking God to forgive you, to to uh, help you find a church and serve the Lord. Pray a prayer like this and just say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he paid for all my sins. I believe he saved me from a devil's hell. I believe that he rose again. And I believe he's coming back. Come into my heart, dear Lord. And help me live for you. And dear God, then help me find a good church and follow you in baptism. In the name of Jesus, our beloved Lord. Amen and amen. And so dear God, we'll bless you. Oh, may the Lord God be your strength today, your help and hope forever. If you've gotten away from church, try to find you a good church. It will please the Lord. And for you to find one where you can go and worship Him with His people. Oh, that's important. That's very important. Let me close with this thought. I think that baptism is something like maybe a wedding ring. Yeah, I've married many, many couples in my ministry through the years. And most of the time they'll have a ring. And the man will put a wedding ring on her third finger of her left hand. And if she, he ha she has a ring, she puts it on the third finger of his left hand. And this means they're married. Now that wedding ring don't make them married. They're married because they go through a process of legality of getting married according to the law of the land and according to the Bible of being taken to vows and being married. But the wedding band is an indication, it's a symbol of the fact that they are married. And so it is with baptism. We're baptized as a symbol of the fact that we are Christians and we belong to God. And I pray God will bless you. May the hand of the Lord be with you. And I hope maybe this message has helped some of you in the matter of baptism. And may God bless you and help you to know He loves you. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.